Hey everyone, welcome to today's In Creative Company conversation for Stars Fell on Alabama. My name is Scott Mance. I'll be moderating today's conversation. And I just want to welcome the cast and director to our conversation. Let's start with director VW Shike. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Okay, we also have joining us playing Bryce Dixon, James Maslow. Hey there, morning. Morning to you. Playing Madison Bell, Ciara Hanna. Hi. <laughs> playing Rachel Kenney, Lisa Wilson. Hello, hello. And playing Taylor Hicks. Taylor Hicks, welcome. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so right now, uh, Stars Fell in Alabama is on demand. So please make sure you tell everyone to watch this feel good crowd pleaser in every sense of the word. But I just want to know like how this got started. How did this come about? VW, let's start with you. Uh, your first take on the screenplay written by Robert Windham. You know, Scott, he brought me the screenplay that was something he had been working on for and kept keeping to his heart for about 15 years. Uh, it's a story that involves his own personal experiences with his friends and his family. And he brought it to me and said, hey, is this something we could put together? And I said, if we could find the right cast and the right people to do this, it could be really amazing. So that was my first first take on it. And I just lived in Beaufort, South Carolina, which is a small little beautiful storybook town. And I was lucky enough to have had some contacts there. So we teamed up, we brought it to this wonderful location and uh, it just kind of kicked off from there. And, and it's just a series of really fortunate accidents kind of came together and we, we pulled it off. It's, it's amazing. But, you know, like, like I said, at the top of the conversation, I, I, like this is, this is a movie, this is a story that I absolutely really, really related to. So starting with UCR, like what was your take on the screenplay and how did you relate to the story? <laughs> it was adorable, first of all. <laughs> um, it was like one of those scripts where I felt good reading it the entire time. And I've been wanting to do a movie like that so bad and wanting like a, like, it didn't have to be a rom-com, but just something that made my heart smile. And the entire time reading it, I smiled. And then when I met Robert <laughs> W., I, it exploded even more. And I'm all about connections and how I feel about people and meeting them for the first time. Everything just seemed to align just perfectly. And the rest is history. <laughs> how about for you, James? How did you relate to the story? Well, to Ciara's point, I, I looked at the script and went, you know, I don't have anything like this that the the whole family can actually watch that is genuinely heartfelt and i read it and connected to it in the sense that i said you know i would love to bring a positive look on agents <laughs> which you know <laughs> not always the case i've had both sides of that quite frankly um and also having uh, an old friend i mean Ciara and i've known each other for i think like 13 years we shared shared the first uh, manager well, that I had, I think that both of us had uh, when, when I first came out to LA. So having an old friend and a good friend attached definitely was the, one of those uh, impetus moments and you know, almost of sincere dip, like, okay, I, I definitely meant to do this. Exactly. Lisa, how about you? <laughs> so it came about a little bit different for me. VW uh, and I share a mutual friend, her name is Lori, and she reached out to me and asked me if I would read for this film that her friend was doing. And so I said, sure. And I initially read for the role of Charlotte. And um, VW contacted me, I don't know, maybe a week and a half, two weeks later and asked me if I would be Rachel because they saw me more as their Rachel. And as I was reading the whole script, I was like, I mean, really truly Rachel is like me in the core. So I am a hundred percent on board. And the film itself, like reading the script, just like Ciara said, it is such a feel good experience just to read through and, and even being a part of making it, it was, it was so heartwarming and I was really excited to do a project that my parents could be proud of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's one of those where they will show all of their friends and they will have watch parties. So, you know, that was, that was really exciting for me. Uh, Taylor Hicks, uh, you know, I, when I first watched the film, I didn't know you were in it until I got to your scene and I was like, oh my gosh, what a great surprise. How'd this come about for you? And how, um, what made you say yes, really? <laughs> well, Robert and I think Robert and I met at a couple of Alabama football games. Um, Robert, obviously he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And, and uh, he called me about this particular script that he was writing and um, you know, being from Alabama, uh, I'm from Birmingham, Robert's from Mobile. 
Um, he just wanted, I think he wanted, you know, kind of an Alabama. This is more of the, I'm kind of a little bit more of the musical aspect to the movie. I mean, I pop in, in, in a scene, which is kind of reminiscent of, uh, Charlie Daniels and urban cowboy, you know, um, you know, Charlie Daniels did like a cameo in urban cowboy, but it wasn't really Charlie. It was kind of like a, Hmm, that's interesting. You know, that was an interesting part. So I was excited when Robert actually asked me to come up and, uh, and pop in and do it. But, uh, you know, my role obviously was to try to, um, you know, put some really good music together. And uh, he and I came up with a, a couple of songs that are on the movie. So, so it's not just the going home aspect of it that's totally relatable. I, I think for especially everyone on this conversation, after you've been working in LA and Hollywood for a little while, and then you go home, People treat you really differently, don't they? Uh, Ciara, let's talk with uh, you about that experience. Um, I think me and James had this conversation uh, the other day. Like, it's funny how you're in the world here, and it's when you go back home, people think you're a millionaire, you have like Lamborghinis, you have this, you have that, but you're still the same old person. So it is funny going back and seeing old friends or even family members, they treat you completely different. They act like you're this big giant Hollywood star. And like, it's just so, it's so interesting the persona people have, but you're still the same old, you're hustling, you're working your butt off every single day just to, to, to do what you love. And it's a very interesting thing how it switches like that. James, did you have an experience like that where you went back and like maybe people who wouldn't give you the time of day you know, when you were like in high school, we're like, hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, everybody wants to be your best friend because, yeah. and, and you know, I get it to a point. It's exciting. We get to make movies. We get to act. And uh, I think that there is this kind of undue, unfortunate pressure that all of us have ha felt. And I definitely felt earlier on in my career, that you kind of have to be this, this person or this thing. And as I've gotten older, I just, I just don't care anymore. I just don't. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be doing this. And I think to, to, to Ciara's point, all of us just want to keep working. We love what we do. And so the more we do it, the older we get, almost the more success we have, ironically, I think the more humbled we are because we recognize just how cool it is and how lucky we are to do it. And I think this is also what begets us continuing to work is, is the humility and then the hard work of knowing that there's people constantly on our heels. There's so many talented actors and, and artists out there that if we get comfortable or cocky or live up to that, Re unrealistic expectation I don't think we'll continue to work so uh it's it's an ironic situation but I'm um, just happy to be uh just still working okay Lisa how about you did you have like a you know going home after Hollywood experience I you know I have been um, making my way up through the ranks in TV for many years like for me it started with American Idol and pageants Taylor I was on American Idol too uh -huh. um, you didn't tell me that <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's been going on for a very long time. And initially, whenever the American Idol days were happening, people would freak out whenever I would be around. And I was waiting tables at the time at Chili's. And so I couldn't even do my job anymore. And I had to be like moved to the back of the house. It was just like a whole thing. But then I moved to Atlanta and I started working here. And um, as I got more involved in TV and film, I found that the community back home became more and more supportive and really just excited that I'm still a part of the community and my family yes my family's very excited I've, you know my uncles and aunts have literally followed me all over the country to support me in a lot of the things that I've done so you know it's been wonderful I can't say enough good things about the people of my hometown and how they have just supported me there's a giant photo of me in the mall I mean it's like, <laughs> wow <laughs> it's awesome <laughs> it's a, I mean it's really special they're they're great people and my family has just been so supportive so yeah and and to what James was saying like we're just happy to be working it's it's amazing how people can perceive you whenever they see you on tv they think that you have all of the things but i mean we all just like live our little lives and mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal to us because it's just like you go to your job every day if you're an accountant and we go to our jobs every day as actors we just do something different you know absolutely 100 percent agree and having gone to school for accounting i can relate to that answer <laughs> on many counts <laughs> Yo, know, VW, I want to I want to ask um, about casting, uh, especially when it came to casting Bryce and Madison. Uh, who were you looking for? What were you looking for? And what made Ciara and James perfect? You know, we looked at casting for this, and again, I'm at the airport, so I apologize for the uh, 
the overhead announcement, but it's necessary. Um, looking at casting for Stars from Alabama, we, we had a very short list and kind of looking through possibilities, different faces, and, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, kind of range when you look for specific looks that we, we were hoping for. And I think that for both Ciara and James, what caps us both really quickly was their eyes. You look at these two individuals and they have these just captivating deep pockets into their souls. And you look at them instantly and you're like, oh my gosh, this, this guy, wow, she's amazing. And they, they just, you just kind of stumble over yourself how they're just so breathtaking. So, and then when you meet them and you, you feel their personalities and they're just so honest, right? They're very few people who can bring to the camera kind of a sense of, you know, sincerity and honesty that they did for the, for the roles. And that was really what we we're looking for because the, ultimately if you feel like they're putting on a character or a facade and they're not playing it real, um, it, it pulls you out of the story. So when we met them, uh, you know, casting them both, uh, I just sat down with them for probably 30, 40 minutes. And instantly you're like, these are real people. They've had experiences. They, they have, they have a, a sense of earnestness to them that comes across. And, and yeah, it's, I think it's just the, the eyes that won me over for both of them. I, I think that, uh, you know, James, if I could have eyelashes like you, I would just be, yeah, I would love that. I eyelashes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to say the eyes, but I think James, James kind of has these magical eyelashes that he fl flitters twice and they think the, the water's just part, you know, it's amazing. And uh, obviously Ciara is gorgeous. So, yeah. James, like uh, who, who knew that you'd be uh, joining this conversation and getting props for your eyelashes? <laughs> oh, I, I paid him handsomely to say all of this. I love it. Um, keep going. I'm just, I'm just here to listen and observe. Uh, no, that's a, VW's the best, man. Um, let me just chime in real quick and say something about VW. Part of the appeal, too, of going in for this is that I, I have found myself my entire career being overprepared. I'm not comfortable or confident in any of my work unless I know it backwards and forwards. And, you know, not always is that shared across the board. But coming in, VW had such a specific idea of what he wanted and had gone and done the work. He did a pre-visualization, actually drew out by hand the entire film. Mm -hmm. which makes my life and the actor's job so incredibly easy and wonderful because then you know you're going to get what you need and you're going to have a product and then you have the room to play and have fun as an actor because if you don't have a game plan you can't play around like you don't know what you're doing so bw thank you for that you made all of our lives very very easy for oh uh, you're, you're sweet james i mean when you have such amazing people to work with you can't but not bring your a game you know, we talked a couple times on set to, to come into this world where you have this amazing cast together and this awesome crew. And if you didn't have all that support, all that homework, as you said, um, you'd be you'd just doing yourself a disservice. So I, I'm glad you liked it. And uh, yeah, it was all we could do to do our best. And, and it came really through on the, on the last picture. It looks great. Sierra, I would love to hear you chime in on that love fest for VW. I know, I feel like we're just like loving each other so much right now because it's true. Like what James said is like he literally every day we felt so prepared. We knew what we're getting ourselves into. And as an actor, we don't get that all the time. And there's a lot of times you'll get on set and they'll switch, they'll do this, that, that. You have no idea what's going on. And VW literally made everything, we, we saw everything before we even went on set and it made us feel complete comfortable. You can put down your walls. And I think that's really what got us. I mean, it's, I think it, it's, you're able to get more into the moment versus trying to think of all the different elements in a scene and you're able to just be present. And I think that was really important for a movie like this. And Thank you, VW, for making that possible. You, you guys are too kind. I made all the mistakes in pre events I made all the all the all the accidents happen uh, digitally. So we got there in real life. We could actually make the magic. It, it was just a process. So I'm glad you liked it. The words of Madison Bell, a consummate professional. Wasn't that your favorite line, Kiara? My favorite line. I saw that last story. I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that word. Oh, you're amazing. Sometimes Jane. on set, you just have a, a word or a line you can't say. That was Kiara's day. <laughs> no, I don't have, yeah, a little tongue-tied sometimes. Lisa, what's your take on uh, or just the, the preparation, the production, just how it, it just all happened so organically and seamlessly and everybody was so prepared and gelled so well? Um, it was uh, one word, magical. It, the whole experience was magic. I couldn't believe how well they took care of us on set. I mean, there were nights where there was like a coffee truck brought to set. There were massage therapists on set. I mean, right. these things that you never, you remember that guys, you, <laughs> you never get that. And so for me, the experience of just being there and it being so seamless and so planned out. And also like V-Dub is so passionate about about storytelling and about this project in particular. And I think that that fueled all of us to be really excited about the story on the long nights, the long days. And it was just a, a wonderful experience overall. So for me, it was magic. So Taylor, like tell us about 
the, the songs that you you came to perform in the film, uh, you know, shooting your scene, the swing dance, uh, how'd that all come about and why these songs? What was the inspiration behind them? Um, so Robert kind of was talking to me about what he and V-Dub were was talking to me kind of like initially about what um, what they wanted as far as songs for the movie. Um, obviously, um, we were really excited about the Gives You Hell by the All-American Rejects, which was um, uh, which really hasn't been done in, in quite some time. So it was kind of a, a, a cool idea outside of you know, uh, performing in the movie. Um, and then also, you know, organically speaking, there is a, uh, there is a scene before the big dance scene where, um, we, we were, there's kind of a little bit of a hole for some music. And, um, interestingly enough, when we were shooting and I was like, you know, I've got a record coming out and uh, I've got a really cool song called port swing. That's like a very kind of a sweet kind of country version of like let's get it on or something which is like which was what a really cool segue into you know this wonderful uh dance scene in this in the in the movie and uh and i actually took him we went and basically listened to you know to it on headphones it, the song hasn't even hadn't even been mixed yet and uh he listened to it and, and v-dub both of them were were like it fits perfectly you know as a segue obviously into um into the big dance scene and then uh then then the time then stars fell out in alabama we uh i did that i've never done a version of that um you know obviously being from alabama it was something that uh really sparked my interest so uh we were able to knock three of those out in uh a really cool studio in uh, in mobile alabama um and uh it just worked out i think the movies i think the music's been great for the movie yeah the music really just kind of solidifies the tone of the film and, and, you know, Lisa, just to kind of take the word you said, magic, uh, there is a magical quality to the film. It is irresistible. It is a feel-good crowd pleaser. And I have to say, it is also the movie we need right now. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, VW, I mean, I, I think I heard that Taylor called you, call you VW. Uh, maybe that's your nickname, but whatever you like. I, I had said all things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the, the, uh, challenge to kind of capture that that hometown southern charm the southern charm tone of the film i, I think when you get into these uh, film productions the the quick in instinct it would be to go on stage and kind of craft it all and build sets but i thought that if we could just find a place that's just a little storybook you know nook that hasn't been shot in like over 20 years does such a place exist and so we found that in south carolina which has doubled for alabama funny enough in forrest gump already so that was really for us like the canvas. I, I feel like looking at that going, okay, we can plan this out. We can make this really pretty. And and uh, like I mentioned before, just kind of building it all in 3D and, and storyboarding and doing all that preparation. Then you have time to like plan out your shots. And ultimately when you have this beautiful backdrop, you think and you're listening to music and you're like, oh, there's that gives you hell song playing on the radio or whatever it is again. Um, who, who could possibly cover this? Like what, are there any options at all? Like what if this was in the movie? How, what if we did a countrified version of this wouldn't that be amazing like we could pull this off and then obviously uh this you know f finding that taylor was available and willing to do this kind of pulled it all together nicely but i, I think that the that the environment played such a big part right because coming home has to have a character to itself and having these lovely palm trees and these amazing main street and these little little, little restaurants and diners and inns the inn was such a big part um it, it led itself to so much to the film to make, make you go juxtapose it to LA, right? Chrome and glass and fast moving cars and all this kind of fun life and then slow it down and give it this really heartfelt country feel. I think it made a big difference to have that right location. Uh, CR, you you uh, do uh, some some crooning on your own in the film. Uh, tell us about uh, singing uh, Stars Fell in Alabama. <laughs> uh, I was terrified because I'm not really a singer. And so I did it when I was younger, but that was with my baby voice. <laughs> and I grew up <laughs> and did not work on that very much. Uh, so it definitely was one of those things that took me completely out of my comfort zone. It took a lot of massaging from VW and Robert to convince me to do it. And I, uh, I put everything I could in it and I'm still like all like Eevee Jeebies about it, but I tried my best, but it definitely was one of those moments that I'll remember forever in a film that I felt completely out of my comfort zone, but I put everything I had into it and that's all I can do. <laughs> wow. It sounded great. <laughs> 
Damn. It turned out great. Right. And fun fact, Lisa, you actually sang the demo of it, right? So that's actually that's what like, we yeah. we filmed to was your voice. Yeah. Lisa went back in and uh, did it herself. Yeah, originally I was like, okay, cool. Lisa has a great voice. She's good <laughs> for me. I'm solid. And then afterward, after tequila shot, I started singing. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was whiskey yeah. for us when we recorded the demo. We were having whiskey nights. <laughs> Is Whatever it takes to get you into character, you know, we're in a hotel room with Zebedee Rowe and we got, the, we got the recorder out and we're just playing it over and over again. And it, it worked great as a, as a temp track. That was fun. But I will say, if you, if you like the song Star of Alabama and you haven't heard Taylor's uh, cover of it, it's going to knock your socks off. Like the other versions are, you know, Billie Holiday is a nice thing and, and all, it's, it's all fine. But I think, Taylor, you really took it to a new level with the harmonica kicks in. You just, to me, the room melts away. The smoke fills in. You can just feel the sound. It's just, it's amazing. It's so great. Thanks, Bob. Hope everybody likes it. Oh, they're going to tell us, about, tell us more about it, Taylor. Tell us more about that. Uh, well, I was, you know, I was at, I was actually, um, you know, my reference uh, for that particular song was um, a song that uh, by an artist named Shelby Lynn, who uh, who won a Grammy. Um, she's from Biola Battery, Alabama. Uh, she is probably one of my favorite. Um, you know, just Southern alternative female singers. Uh, she's got a song that she, she wrote called Where I'm From. And uh, it's got a very, um, uh, it's kind of a Cajun French kind of a sway to it. It's got a really great clarinet in it. And it just, it sounds a little bit like, you know, Alabama and kind of the South and it's dreamy. And, you know, I kind of just wanted to use that as a reference. Um, and so I did, you know, I got in, uh, obviously we were down in, in Mobile, which is um, kind of the epitome of a sleepy Southern Bayou, you know, town anyway. So um, it, it worked. Um, we put, I uh, had a clarinet player from New Orleans come on and uh, it, it really, I wanted to just make a really vintage classic record out of that. I think, I think Taylor, it needs to become the new theme song for Alabama, the way uh, Georgia on your mind is for, uh, for Georgia. I think uh, the, your version to take the state by storm and just uh, set set the tone as you're pulling into or flying into the state. They just play that at the airport every day for everybody. I would crazy. really, really love that. <laughs> <laughs> let's get that going. Let's uh, let's get that going on social media. Get it trending on Twitter. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> Ciara, I was going to ask you. So, so when I'm watching the film, and I I love the the dynamic, the volley, the rhythm, the chemistry between you and James. So. Here we're talking on this conversation. You two have known each other for a long time. And I'm like, oh, well, that's got to be a big reason why both of your performances are, are elevated. So I'm wondering like how that relationship, the, the relationship that you have played into the chemistry with your performances. It definitely was to kind of rewind when I got asked to do this film, I had no idea at all James was connected to this. And they didn't know at all, me and James even knew each other when they casted us. And so when we found out that, oh, so-and-so is gonna play Bryce and then Madison were like, oh, what? And it just one of those, like he said, serendipity moments where like, oh, wow, well, gotta do it now. <laughs> um, but it is nice to, especially with um, building chemistry isn't always the easiest thing. And you can't just build chemistry with anyone. Like you, you can't you can try your hardest but you can always see it on screen when there's not real chemistry and you, there's many movies out there that's obvious but it was one of those things where we just cut through the bs and right back into it and like like you said we've known each other for so long and just went back into our normal selves and it wasn't hard at all it, i think after like a day of just like the, on the first day they stuck us in a truck with each other like the whole day all the scenes were in the truck like well Time to catch up. <laughs> on, on a green screen, you guys, first day green screen in a car, like it was unbelievable. And I was like, okay, either this is going to work or it's going to be a huge disaster. And I think one of the tricks is you leave the mics on, you listen to the talent. And within moments, it's like brother and sister giving each other a hard time. You know, you're, 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 you're kind of Josh and James and James is jabbing you back. And I'm like, these kids are amazing. These guys got it. it it's all good. It's going to be just sit back and watch the magic. It, it was amazing. <laughs> Uh, I would take away the brother and sister thing because we end up making out like later in the movie. But That's part two. I meant about the front, you know, the watching part, the, you know. The, the, yeah. uh... James, what's your take on, on how that, that uh, friendship off camera leads to uh, a better performance for you and for, for your characters on camera? 
look, any, any relationship is ultimately a friendship, right? And so the, the better friends you are, the better that relationship is going to be, whether it's, you know, father, daughter, boyfriend, girlfriend, even just buddies. And so it just, to, to Ciara's point, it, you know, expedited the process. It alleviated any pressure from like, hey, maybe we won't get along. Like we've known each other for a long time. Definitely day one was awkward. Like, hey, have we changed into different people? Oh, no, good, cool, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, I want to ask about just sort of the collaboration uh, with VW and, and just with your, your, your cast members, your fellow cast members about, uh, you know, just having a more organic set, uh, maybe trying things or improvising going off script a little uh was that was that part of the plan or was that part of the the the, the process here or was it no we've got to stick to the script um you know we always try to stick to the script as much as we can but we did play with it you know there was there was a fun dynamic especially in the pool scene where there was um a little bit of improv happening and uh mike mike bash who was behind me like in the pool there he was constantly like cracking jokes and doing things to really like amp up the moment so it was fun to be in an environment with actors that are unafraid to just explore different places that the script can go but we also had to honor the text so yeah, yeah. it was it was really fun to be able to just explore a little bit how, how was that process for for you vw in terms of just like like just creating like a real collaborative uh supportive environment uh one where you can kind of try some different things here and there yeah, I think that for me, all the prep and all the, pro the process goes into making that environment a safe place where actors can feel the ability to stretch a little bit and kind of flex and, and go a little bit further than they would if they were just chasing scene or hopefully this is going to be covered or we're going to have shots done. So my job really was trying to get everything as comfortable and in a creative safe space so they wouldn't be afraid that we weren't going to be probably taken care of. So now you have this environment, you've got this beautiful set and you're, and you're with these actors that are all like melling and gelling, uh, gelling so well Ooh, this, this mask is fun to talk through um that, that you you don't have to worry about it right and now you're like oh let's try this let's try that let's get the script obviously as it's written but then we've got time to play but let, let, let's let's push it a different angle let's push a little bit further and some of those lines were really great and they and the moments came through and they made the cut ultimately you know being able to direct and edit the film is just a kind of a blessing that you can go through each take all the things and find all the little moments all the little looks some of the eye rolls that Ciara does in the car, for instance, when, when James is trying to like lay out his big master plan on how he's going to take the town by storm. And she's just, you know, giving him the, the, the old, oh, whatever, you know, and it's just, it's priceless. And I think that only happened because <laughs> I, yeah, it's really good. Um, it only happened because we had this wonderful, safe environment where people trusted each other and there was a mutual respect on, on set. And, and it's really got kind of this, this great kind of recipe for, for magic. Taylor, you talked about recording the music, getting the music ready, but tell us about filming your scene. Uh, how many days was it? Uh, what was the choreography like? Take us through the process there. Well, I was very lucky because I feel like that, that that's such an important scene in the movie. And I feel like that it's, it's one of the most endearing parts of the movie for me too. Cause um, you know, I, I just, it, it's such a lovely town you know, South Carolina anyway, and um, all, everybody was so sweet, and everybody was working extremely hard, and, and that particular day was, um, was super long, it was, I, I came in for a couple of days, um, got to hang around town a little bit the night before, and then uh, showed up the next day, and uh, was, everybody was so professional, and uh, so talented, uh, it was just a really cool, I, I you know, I'm not around, uh, you know, film sets a lot. And uh, that was just something that I, it was, everybody was kind of pulling their weight and trying to make, you know, the best film as they could. And um, everybody was so nice. It's just, they, it was, it was a, just a really wonderful day. I was there for one day. I, I would have liked to have, uh, have hung out a couple of more times and had whiskey night. Uh, but I had, I think I had something going on, but um, it was such, it's such a cool thing. I mean, everybody was, it was a, it's just fun now that you look back on it um you know we are blessed to be able to do what we love and to be able to get back on uh, a set or even get back on a stage to play music and uh get in the studio to create art um you know now more than ever you know those things will stick in my mind and it was such a great it's a great day and a great set and a great group of people well kind last of question Oh, go ahead, VW. I was going to say kind of the genesis of that whole dance scene was uh, 
partially I, I, I give credit to my wife, Winley, who's one of the executive producers of the project. She's a huge Jane Austen fan. And in those movies, you have these wonderful line dances, always British soldiers in proper uniforms. And they're doing these very structured dance lines. Um, not country line dancing, but it's line dancing just the same. But the dialogue is completely different. The dialogue's about, you know, who's looking at who and who's going to have a relationship with what and what, what marriage is on the line and what reputation. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could take this fight scene that's going to happen and put it and structure it around a dance, a really, really complicated, I went at line dance. And so uh, I reached out to my cousin in San Diego. She has a dancing school. And went down there for a day and worked it all out and choreographed it. And then we sent those tapes to Buford to a dance school there and got a lot of local people to volunteer and just work on it and work on it and work on it. And the week or so I was before we shot there, I flew in and kind of choreographed it again and just worked on it in, in open field, radio on. And so on the day, when you get Taylor Hicks to come to set, you, you got to have all your ducks in a row, right? He's not, I mean, you're, you're, you're very sweet, Taylor, and super professional. I'm not going to waste your time, right? So we have to make sure everybody's got their A game on and got all the extras in there. And obviously the night before, I think, guys, is the night before we went, went to that big facility and we practiced and rehearsed that dance. Is that, is that right, James? That you were... Yeah, I think it was the night before. Ordered in some sushi, which I remember. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and, and people are like, can, can James, is James going to be able to do this, like this really complicated dance? I'm like, guys. This James Master. He, he literally dances with stars. Okay. This is the best dancer of us all. Let's I mean, just showed up late. Not true. Steps. Yeah, oh, he, had, he had to hold back. We they had it prepared. Him. They made it easy. <laughs> I was following their out. lead. That's all. So, so now you've got this great choreographed dance. You've got these amazing actors, this amazing talent on stage performing the music. So now it's just literally capturing it on camera, right? Just moving it around, finding a flowing way that's going to all put it together. I mean, guys, this is, this is a dream come true. Absolutely. Okay, so last question is for you, Ciara. You know, we're, we're living in very, very challenging times. And like, what is your hope that people take with them when they watch Stars Fell in Alabama? Oh, uh, a lot. <laughs> we all need it. Um, I think it goes back to the same feeling I got when I first read the script is feel good, like heart smiling um, feeling and I don't know how to explain it but that feeling I felt when I read it and then the feeling I felt while filming it and the feeling I got while watching it mm -hmm. I want everyone else to feel that same feeling and just take a break from everything and be captivated by this and just feel good just feel really good and that's what I hope everyone feels and I think they will <laughs> Well, make sure you bring on the feels, everyone. Stars Fell in Alabama is on demand now. Please spread the word and everyone watch it and feel good because we all need a feel-good movie right now. And this is the one. I want to thank all of you for joining our conversation for In Creative Company. Have a great, great day and a happy new year and be safe, everyone. Thank you. Happy new year, everybody. Happy, happy new year. year. Scott, thanks for your time.